Now, still on the Commonwealth, Charles is off to Kenya later this month. Uh, he has plans to honour the Queen during this visit. What does he have in mind? So he is going to be the first monarch to address the the Mau Mau uprisings and uh, the the uh, role of of the British army uh, in actually suppressing them. Obviously, the, the British government did acknowledge them back in 2013 when they paid um, roughly a sum of £20 million to uh, about 5,000 survivors of, of those uprisings and how they were uh, brutally uh, t- stamped down by, by members of uh, the British Empire. But at the end of the day, you know, it's important for him to acknowledge it. Many people don't actually know about the Mau Mau uprisings, even though it, they involved, uh, was, I believe it's the largest tribe in, in, in Kenya, the Kikuyus, um, and it's still a, a sore point for many Kenyans. Uh, now I don't believe even going around the world to apologise for sins of the past, because at the end of the day, that's impossible. Um, and I think it's also a bit tone deaf. Many of us that exist today are beneficiaries of, of our ancestors committing some sort of vile, barbaric atrocity to further their civilizations. When, when our ancestors pillaged villages and, 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 and effectively brought down civilizations to further their own, we now in modern day are effective beneficiaries of that, including many Africans as well who were involved in, in atrocities like the slave trade. Ethiopia was one of the last countries in, in Africa to actually abolish slavery under pressure from, from, from the British in the 1940s and 50s. And we can't actually believe that now, but it, you know, it's still, it still happened. And it's it actually, to this day, slavery is still a, a problem in, in those parts of the world. But I do think it's important for the king to acknowledge what happened um, and highlight the progress that the relationship between the, the Britain and, and Kenya has made and hopes for the future. And I think that's the important tone to strike. Look, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not under any impression that it's easy um, being uh, the king and trying to strike the right tone when it comes to these sorts of issues that have to be addressed. But I think that is the way forward. It's not about apologising because no one who commits those atrocities is, is alive today. Um, but it's about acknowledging and it's about moving forward and highlighting a new and better relationship. And I think that's what the king is going to do. And I think that's what makes the royal family so valuable. Now, staying with Charles, and it's been reported that hundreds of iconic brands face not gaining the king's seal of approval unless they prove their green credentials. The existing and sought-after royal warrants have become void, obviously, when the Queen passed away, and those firms now need to reapply for them. We know that Charles is a conservationist. Uh, Does this surprise you? Absolutely not. I mean, if if you know anything about King Charles, this has been probably one of his more consistent and entrenched positions. He's been talking about the environment and protecting it since the 1970s. So this is not something that surprises people. But the pressure that it will have on you know household brands that do have the royal warrant will be immense. We may very well see um, brands that we are very uh, familiar and fond of actually disappearing. So for example, um, Cadbury um, may actually not get its, its its royal seal of approval because it doesn't use fair trade cocoa, which is important to the king, obviously, um, particularly giving the farmers um, that farm cocoa um, better working conditions and better pay, better negotiation. Um, we know that uh, Audi, which is owned by VW, they had a scandal a few years ago where they effectively doctored their emissions figures. We could see them come under fire um, for not meeting the standards of, 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 of King Charles and, and who he's willing to award a royal um, warrant to. Um, we see the likes of Burberry, who a few years ago burnt a lot of their, um, their unsold stock. That's, again very un- unenvironmentally friendly. So we're going to actually see um, a lot of these brands face a lot of pressure. Now, we know there's a lot of value in having uh, the royal warrant. Um, the estimates that it gives um, companies a 5% boost in revenue over their competitors. Now, if you contextualize it, a lot of these companies are pulling in revenue in the hundreds of millions of, of pounds. You know, 5% of that is quite significant. So they will be battling it out. But there's also the, the flip side of, is are these standards going to put unnecessary pressure on companies that may not be able to adapt as quickly as King Charles wants? You, you know, you don't want to, to involve the, the royal family in too much politics. And uh, by actually telling businesses how they can run their affairs, it, you could get into murky waters. Um, so obviously there has to be, I suspect, the 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 onus or the kind of um, threshold to actually demonstrate that you're being environmentally friendly will be not be very high, um, and I think it will be subject to independent uh, counsel. So it doesn't look like that the king is ordering businesses around. Um, but so far as they demonstrate that 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 is in their vision, even if they the highlight sort of investments that they're willing to make in, into more uh, environmentally friendly practices, I think that will probably pass. The threshold, but it, it does have impact, and it, it does definitely stay in uh, in the, the 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 vein of of King Charles and his passion for the environment. 
Yeah, now one quick last one for our history buffs. Now, Henry V is probably the most popular king uh, there is. He beat the French at Agincourt. Uh, it might not seem particularly relevant to Australia, but it's part of our history too. It is actually very relevant. What would have the world look like if he'd lost? Esther, would we be speaking French? Um, we, we probably would have, uh, actually. So there is this weird romanticization of, of, of past monarchs. Um, understandably so, they're still a very significant part of, of British culture. Um, but actually, you can make that argument with a lot of people. You can make that argument with um, Queen Elizabeth's father um, during the time of, of the Second World War. Um, we will probably likely be speaking German, and uh, I'm not sure what would happen in Australia. You might still be speaking English, but it would have been a very different diff different ball game. Um, so I, I do find it interesting when we romanticize certain monarchs. Um, have been a, a string of monarchs that have not been uh, particularly, uh, or should I say, beneficial to the United Kingdom or our history. Um, one of the most famous ones that come to mind is Henry VIII and his poor wives and, you know, his uh, abrogation from the Catholic Church, which now means we have the Church of England and all of that. Um, so it's interesting when when um, these these figures are, are almost uh, deified, when actually if some of if, if if one action went wrong, the course of history would have changed significantly. I may not be here. I may not be speaking English. I may not have come from Ghana. Um, so, so it's important to bear that in mind. As always, Esther, lovely to chat with you, and we will speak to you again soon.